What is up guys, Jacob here, and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, a show in which we will take an engine, look at it, dissect it, and research how it works and which decks are better with it. Last time, we went through a little introduction and grasped the concept of the series. This episode is for keeps, so I hope you're into monster movies, because this one is demonstrably entertaining. Oh, you suck! As you have probably guessed already, either by the title of this video or my disastrous pun, I'll be talking about kaijus. I won't be focusing on the archetype though, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, then you'll find a link in the description to a trip video by a YouTuber much more experienced in the matter than me. Anyway, back to the matter of hand, actually there are two versions of the kaiju engine, one that focuses on the monster removal, and the other that focuses on negation. At first, I'd like to focus on the much more popular variant of the engine, one I'll be referring to as the slumber engine. Pinpointing the beginning of this engine is quite easy actually. It all started with Breakers of Shadows and the introduction of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. At that point, Kaijus were already a part of the game for about 5 months and were used as means of removal for problematic monsters such as Apocalyphord Towers. When Slumber was introduced, it changed how the Kaijus were played and made them splashable. Now every deck had an access to a field wipe, high attack monsters and spot removal. Looking at this, it's not a surprise that Kaijus were used in almost every deck in that era, either in the main deck or side deck. The build concept for this engine is as simple as they come. For every copy of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber you play two free copies of a kaiju. The best way is to use monsters with different names. Why is that exactly? You see, when this spell card resolves, two monsters are summoned to both players' sides of the field. This is the basis behind the two kaiju per slumber argument. When it comes to free kaiju per slumber, you have to look at the spell's additional effect. You can banish it from the graveyard to add a kaiju from your deck. Therefore, when playing free copies of a kaiju per copy of slumber, you can maximize the usage of the spell card and gain the most benefit out of it. However, the engine is not without hindrance. With the addition of Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs to the game, this engine started to lose its popularity. Since the wording states that the summon and the destruction are the same effect, so when one part of it is stopped, the entirety of the card cannot resolve. Thanks to that, Ash Blossom became one of only two hand traps that can stop a field nuke done by a spell. A very specific specific one, but still. Since that hand trap has been popular in the metagame since its release, it's no surprise that the slumber engine became irrelevant. The slumber engine clearly focuses on field clearing, giving the player the means to break the opponent's board. Since this is the case, using it in a deck that wants to establish an unbreakable setup on the first turn can be considered counterproductive. However, the engine was relevant during the Zodiac format in the Zodiac Kaiju. The idea was rather simple. You had your Zodiac, which could easily establish a first turn board, and you had Kaijus for breaking boards if you went second. The other variant is the Waterfront engine. Its main focus is on summoning Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, and using its effect to remove Kaiju counters from Kyoto Waterfront, negating every effect the opponent uses. The core of this engine is just four cards, three Kyoto Waterfronts and one Gamma Seal. This makes it one of the smallest engines currently in the game. It's also very potent and can be problematic for the opponent due to negations done by Gamma Seal and the protection he provides. Some of you might be wondering what kind of protection is it? Well, since you can only control one Kaiju, Gamma Seal's presence makes it so your opponent cannot tribute your monsters to summon a kaiju. This is a very handy engine to have, provided your deck can run it of course, however it's not without weak points. Should the opponent have a way of removing waterfront from the field, you would pretty much be left with a 3k defense vanilla. Also worth noticing is the fact you disregard the spot removal aspect of kaiju in favor of negation. Should there be a problematic monster using gamma seal to deal with it, it would make all copies of waterfront in your deck useless. He considered the low probability of hard drawing Gamma Seal, this might be marginal, but it still exists and has to be addressed. This engine is most notably used in combo-centric decks. 
especially Guard Dragon variants, World Legacy, etc. It can be used in pretty much any deck that can consistently summon Saryuja, since it's the most common way of summoning Gamma Seal with Waterfront already on the field. This wraps up today's episode about the Kaiju engines. I hope you found it informative, and if so, leave a comment or a like. I hope to see you during the streams next weekend. Bye bye!